Hello everyone, this is Char. We just got a new Splatoon 3 Direct yesterday, and I'm super hyped for it, which is why I went through the trailer looking for every little bit of hidden details that I could find, and there was a lot of stuff to look through. I guarantee there'll be some things here that you didn't see on your first time watching. So, I hope you're looking forward to it. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more Splatoon 3 information from me, be sure to subscribe as I put out videos regularly. And with that being said, let's get into the analysis. First off, you might be curious on what this music is playing in the background, and this is actually a demo for a new song we're going to be getting in the third game. So if you want to check it out, I'll leave the link in the description. It's an absolute banger. Real quick, let's go over the new weapons that they added to this game, which is the Glucadoolies, Undercover Brella, splash matic Roller, Clash Blaster, and Charger. We have now seen a weapon from every single class except the brushes. We have the confirmation of two returning sub-weapons. The first one is a burst bomb, which can be seen on the left side here, and we know this is assigned to the splash matic The second one was pointed out by Jay Gordon 4, which notes that curling bomb is also in this map, and it can be seen twice. We know this one is attached to the regular roller. Let's take a look at the crab special. It has a normal firing mode that kills in three shots, as we can see by the Glugadooly. It has two modes of walking, one normally and one rolling and it also has a firing mode where it shoots a blaster-like shot that appears to be a one-shot. Now, during this entire time it fires, the Inkling is 100% vulnerable, so I'm pretty sure you could kill the mech by getting at it from behind, so it seems to be very easy to counter. However, I'm not quite sure how you would stop it in its ball mode. From some screenshots on Nintendo's website, we can see that the crab can actually climb vertically while using its ball mode. It doesn't seem to be able to do so diagonally, as I would guess this is based off baller, which can only climb walls vertically. This bubble shield actually has a really nice small detail. As it's placed down, you can actually see a little bubble blower thing fly out of it. Anyways, the barrier itself seems to block attacks from yourself, but not paint. As you can see, the roller does two flicks, which while it does paint, do absolutely no damage to the undercover umbrella shield. At the same time, the undercover umbrella clearly can't shoot or paint past its own barrier. So it looks like the barrier for your team can block your own damage but not paint, while the barrier for other people blocks paint and damage. Though it might just be who's on the inside and outside. There's also no info on if this shield is breakable or if it has any form of HP, so I guess we'll have to see for that as well as its duration. Also, this bubbler special does extend below the ground. We also get to see another example of a squid roll, and it's worth noting this comes after swimming around, so my theory that squid rolling requires momentum may be true. And then we see the new grappling hook special. This is attached to the splash matic which also has burst bomb, so it seems like a very strong kit. We know you can use it at least two times in a row, as we've seen from the trailer. Now, there's a screenshot going around that shows off the inkjet recall, and a lot of people think this is used for the grappling hook. However, as Carlox has pointed out, there's also an entirely different recall icon. So, is inkjet in Splatoon 3? Maybe. We did see Tena missiles, even though they haven't been mentioned at all, in the first trailer. So, I think it's definitely possible. Another small detail is present with the Gluga. We see them jumping around, which isn't that common, but also their roll doesn't really go that far. A small stage detail is that we can actually see an Inkling jumping right up onto the platform, so that uninkable is something you can actually walk on. Another post from 57747 points out that Clash Blaster's hitbox in Splatoon 3 looks way bigger than it does in 2. I actually have no idea what they're going to do with this, but it looks really interesting. I have no idea how they're going to balance something like this. Maybe it's a charge shot? Who knows? We can see when the Inklings and Octolings jump in that they do have little marker points, so it is definitely somewhere you can pick where you land. Hayden has also pointed out that Chargers don't have a laser anymore. They still glow, but I think this is a necessary buff for the weapon, as it looks like the specials are going to be really good against Chargers in this game. Now, there's even more details from screenshots posted on the Nintendo of America website. The stage we saw in the trailer is known as Eel Tail Alley, and we actually got to see a few screenshots of it. It looks really nice. Museum de Alfonsino is the second stage, and Nintendo actually answers how we can get to old stages, which is a sophisticated transport system. Pretty interesting, but this means that any old stage is on the table. Finally, we have Scorch Gorge, which can be seen in a previous video. That stage name is really hard to say, by the way. It looks pretty cool, and not much seems to have changed from the previous video we saw on it. When talking about the new specials, Nintendo directly states that this special is known as Big Bubbler, which is a modified version of the original Bubbler from Splatoon 1. They also talk about the Grappling Hook special, which is called a Zip Caster, which basically confirms that you can use multiple grapples, it conceals your identity with a little hood, which is really funny, and when your ink runs out, you return to the point you 
you first transform to. This new Inkzuka we saw last time is called the Trizuka, which shoots three powerful shots and can be used three times in a row. So three sets of three shots, pretty interesting. The last special they talk about is Killer Whale 5.1, which is confirmed to be a modified version of Killer Whale. And it's also confirmed that these lasers chase enemies. Now, from the first trailer, we've seen that the duration isn't that long, so hopefully they don't deal too much damage either. They also briefly touch on the new band, Seaside, which is a grungy, rebellious trio that reps hard for the Splatlands. Pretty interesting, and their song sounds amazing, so I'm really looking forward to hear more from them. That was all the details I can find, and wow, there was a lot. I'm really looking forward to talking in more detail about many of these specific aspects, but I want to wrap up this video by talking about Splatoon 3's direction. Splatoon 3's specials and gameplay in general just looks way more individual-based and fun than Splatoon 2. I think we're going to see the game going closer to Splatoon 1's direction, with a lot of things that empower the individual rather than focusing too much on team play. I don't mind the coordinated aspect, but I think since the majority of people play by themselves or don't have the best communication options in-game, that this is the right direction for the game. This is a topic I'll have to talk about in depth in another video. But with that all being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this analysis, and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more thoughts on Splatoon 3 from me. Thank you all so much for watching.